First thing that I need to say up front is that I am not an expert on room acoustics, but I should also say that I built a room in my basement. I spent a lot of time doing very selective research before I started building the room and while I was building the room to try to find the best approach, the approaches that made the most sense. And I've got a link in the description for this video that will take you to a YouTube channel that goes into the method that I used and has a lot of videos covering the topic. Now he covers room treatment for studios, home studios, but basically the same thing applies to listening rooms. Okay. Now, the only difference is that if you have a podcast type studio, the only thing you're really going to be concerned with is uh, treating the vocals. And I should say that this stuff here may work okay for that. That's probably it though. If you have enough of this stuff stuck on your walls, then that's probably going to work for a vocal type arrangement where you're only talking, where there's no music involved, no, what I mean by no music, no low frequencies involved. Anything with frequencies below say 500 Hertz, this will not touch. This will do nothing with. And that's the reason why I say don't buy this. If you're thinking about doing room treatment for music listening, this will do nothing. Because this, you look at this, this is, this is sold as a two inch panel, two inches thick, but it's corrugated like this in these triangle shapes. And this is what I consider this to be mostly is decoration. Okay. And the effective thickness of this is actually quite a bit less than this. What you need to do is you need to take two of these and put them together. So they nest like that. And then you measure the total thickness and divide it by two. And as it turns out, the total thickness of this is actually two and a half. So each panel is just one and a quarter inches thick. And that is 32 millimeters in metric. So what I did was I plugged that into an uh, acoustic calculator that calculates the effective um, absorption of this material. And I also compared it to what I used in the panels that I made last year, or what I think it might've been a little over a year ago. I made acoustic panels for my room that were six inches thick. And you can see that comparison on the screen right now. The green trace is the foam and the blue trace is the panels that I made. And the biggest difference between the two is of course the thickness of it. But what's illustrated in this uh, chart is how much the thicker panel absorbs in the like more frequencies than this will ever go to. This one starts to drop off effective treatment. You can say below 50%. It's not actually 50%, but we'll call it that for these purposes at around 600 Hertz. Whereas the thicker panel at 50% is 90 Hertz. So you're getting down into the base region with that thicker panel. It's not ending there either. It's, it's actually extending down even further. Whereas this one doesn't even rate. So this will not do anything for the base frequencies and it's the base frequencies in the typical room that you need to concentrate on if you want to have effective room treatment. The next chart that I'm going to show compares this to that same thicker panel, but this time the panel has the proper air gap behind it. You want to have at least the minimum thickness of the panel, like an air gap behind it that's equal to or less than. You can go more, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. You want to go the maximum thickness. So if you've got a six inch thick panel, that's 150 millimeters. You want to be 150 millimeters from the wall or six inches and you'll get the most out of that panel. So this 
replots that chart with that gap behind it. Of course, this stuff here can't be mounted with a gap behind unless you build some sort of frame. This is meant to glue or stick right onto the wall so there's no gap behind. So the green trace didn't, ch didn't change, but the blue trace actually went deeper. Now we have coverage down at 50% at 60 hertz. Now the notable thing that you should be getting from this is that this stuff here works in higher frequencies, but then so does the thicker panels. But the thicker panels also work in the mids and they work in the base region if you put enough of them in. So this next chart that I'm going to show you is what I have in the ceiling of my listening room, which is um, open joists like a, a normal basement. But I put eight inches of um, fiberglass insulation in there. So it's eight inches thick absorbable, no gap between it at the back of it. And you can see that in this chart right here. Once again, I'm getting 50% absorption at 60 hertz and it's extending down below that. Even down to 20 hertz, we have a little bit of absorption and it all adds up because in actual fact, it's my entire ceiling is one gigantic acoustic panel. And I think I worked it out. It was like 30 of those panels that I made that are two feet wide and 48 inches tall. So that'll tell you what you need to do to try to get down into the base region to get that under control in a fairly small room. My room is 14 by 14. I'm not sure exactly what that is in, in metric, but I'll put it on the screen right here. And that's classified as a small room acoustically. To get to a big room, you need a big room. I'm talking, you know, gymnasium, uh, church, <laughs> thing like that. That's a big room. Small rooms are what you're going to find in the average house. Even, you know, bigger houses that have bigger rooms are generally small rooms. So the acoustics there are different from what you'll have in a large room. So just for the sake of comparison, I changed the foam to carpet, having carpet on your floor. And that's what that green line is in this chart. And you can see that once again, that is not an effective room treatment. Even in the mid range is doing very little. It's only the highest frequencies that it's truly effective. So if you're counting on carpet to be your room treatment, you've got the entire floor done wall to wall and right in front of your speakers, you got a mat, you know, or maybe a couple stacked up or whatever. You're just killing the high frequencies. And those are the frequencies that you have to be careful with. Now I talked about my ceiling. My ceiling is not all absorber. It is but it has slats on the front that reflect the higher frequencies back. So they're not absorbed. So what you have is you have a lot of absorption down low and very little up high. So you're preserving those high frequency reflections. And that's the problem that most people run into when they're doing their room treatment. They start with carpet on the floor. And so already they're killing the high frequencies and then they start adding more stuff and it becomes what they call an anechoic chamber. It kills too many of the high frequencies and they say that's a bad thing. And it is, it's a bad thing. You want to preserve those high frequencies. Therefore carpet is not, and drapes, another one, are not effective room treatments. You want to, the best approach is to leave the floor bare as in if it's hardwood now, don't put carpet on it, don't put rugs down, work on effective treatment, that's thick panels, and put enough of them in to actually treat the low end. Before I wrap this one up, I got another thing to talk about, and I'm going to call this segment of the video, what are the lab coats up to? And uh, I'm calling it that because it came from a forum, um, an email, direct me to this, this thread on a forum where they're, what they're trying to do is cancel, um, room modes by using more sound. And so the, the theory is, and this is the best way that I can come up with to think, uh, like to, to, to try to describe it. If you take a bell and you strike it, it rings and you hear that and it continues to ring until it dies out. So what you have to imagine is what they're trying to do is 
once the bell is struck, strike it again at exactly the right time to stop that ringing. So you get the initial sound from the bell, that, that ring thing, but it stops immediately. It stops resonating. Because in a room, you know, all small rooms have room modes. And what room modes are, are resonances, and they correspond to the size of the room. There's no getting around that. That's physics. Okay? That, that will, you, can't, you can't undo that. If you're in a room, you have room modes. So what, what resonances are is ringing. When it hits a specific frequency, I'll use my room in my basement, my listening room, as an example. I, this 14 by 14, like I said, that means that I have a room mode at 40 hertz, and I have another one at the ceiling, the floor height, at around 78 hertz. Okay, so when those frequencies are playing in the music, they're gonna, the room is gonna resonate at those frequencies. And what that means is that you're gonna get standing waves. And the standing waves multiply, they make it boomy, and they also create nulls. And the only effective way to deal with that is to try to absorb that excess energy. And that's what the room treatment does. Not this stuff, the thick panels. Okay? So what they're trying to do is set up more subwoofers <laughs> that will play out of time, slightly out of time, precisely timed out of time with other subwoofers so that they'll try to stop that ringing. And from what I've seen, just glancing through the thread, they're not making significant progress. What they're doing is they're using Room EQ Wizard to look at the measurements before and after, and they're seeing tiny changes. And this is the kind of micro view that people adopt when they get tools to look at things closely. Uh, I'm a woodworker, okay? So when you're, if you're a woodworker, you'll, you'll, you'll recognize this immediately. When you're working on a project, you're seeing every tiny flaw and detail that, you know, because you're looking at everything so closely. So if you sand something the wrong way, you're going to see the, the cross grain scratches. If your joint doesn't line up perfectly, you're going to see that offset. But at the end, once the project is finished and you stand back and look at the big picture, you really have to be looking for those defects to see them. Okay, so that's the micro view when you have the tools or the, you know, the intention of looking closely and the macro view where you look at the big picture, okay? So what you need to do is look at a room acoustics from, um, in one case, a micro view where you'll look at the measurements, but then you have to look at the big picture and see what's happening. And like a room acoustics is not a new field and there are still probably discoveries to make, but it's been well established that absorption, not this stuff, once again, is the best way to deal with those room modes. And it's a brute force approach, but it is very effective if you do enough of it and the panels are the right thickness. So trying to do it electronically, what you're gonna be winding up doing is either adding in distortion because take that ringing bell, if you strike it, you get a clear tone that dies out over time. And when you strike it again, it makes another sound. And that is the definition of distortion. So that is not the way to treat room modes. You have to treat room modes in a specific way. And that's what absorption. You can either use velocity type traps, which are these, but not these. <laughs> Once again, these are no good. Or you can use what are known as pressure traps. And that's what my walls act like downstairs in my room. I made them so that they would react to the specific frequencies that coincide with the room, particularly 40 hertz. So when you get a 40 hertz tone, my walls move slightly and that absorbs some of that energy. And in doing so, it reduces that ringing 
time. You still get the original tone, but what you don't get is that excess ringing.